year ago for uh, open source uh, mail server application clients application for encrypted email and after one year they present the um, alpha beta stage better stage um, yeah and it's a secure way to read write and organize piles and piles of email I read so thank you and good luck no to the our designer right <laughs> Okay, so um, hi, I'm Smarty, this is Brennan. We uh, are two-thirds of the MailPile team. And basically, we want to just give you a very quick uh, lowdown. We weren't really uh, planning on this, so it's kind of uh, ad hoc. But yeah, long story short, email is broken. It is everybody's favorite uh, uh, communications protocol until you, know, you notice that it is almost 50 years old. And over those 50 years, it's been accumulating a massive amount of corrupt and complexity and stuff because everybody keeps adding their favorite features. Some of them are terrible, other ones are great, but nowadays it's uh, uh, the fact that it's kind of a bit complicated means that, uh, that it's slowly being uh, attacked by all sorts of centralized uh, evil platforms that, despite being centralized and evil, are way easier to manage from a technical perspective for you know, those who want to run them. And, hey, more profitable, right? But despite all of the uh, problems, there are currently about 2.5 billion email users. That's a very um, kind of, it's a, that's a conservative estimate. It might be as many as 3 billion. And, you know, that's about you know, more than double the amount of Facebook users. Uh, so it is, for better or worse, the most commonly used uh, communications protocol, you know, um, uh, for messaging. And, you know, matters a lot for business and, and everything everybody does, really. Uh, but the sad thing is, well, this is weird, uh, is that pretty much all email nowadays goes through uh, the 10 largest email providers. You know, so this is just a, a graph that I worked out from my uh, inbox um, that shows that you know, at a certain time a couple of years ago, about 90% of my email, despite the fact that I have my own email server and all, all that, 90% uh, of it was going through you know, the top 10 uh, big email servers on the internet. Um, it's been going down quite rapidly. Uh, this sharp decline here is actually um, last summer, so that's pretty good, uh, right? Uh, but long story short, we decided that we need to kind of re-decentralize the, um, the entire question of email. And uh, in order to do that, we want to re-expose local hosts, you know, start using um, uh, the local, uh, local computer as the email client rather than uh, putting all everybody's uh, email into big servers like a Gmail has 600 million users now, roughly. You know, um, so... You know, we, we want this, uh, the, the local computer to be a server, and we started working on this thing called MailPile. And it is a hybrid app, which is a weird term that, uh, you know, yeah. yeah. But uh, roughly what it means is that it is a uh, HTTP server that runs on whichever device you want, and, uh, and the it exposes a HTML front end, but all of the actual processing and stuff happens in the back end. Um, so we've got native installers, we've got native integration, like you know, if you want to use silly operating systems that aren't free, then you can do so and it won't be horribly painful. So, you know, the, the question comes to why. Do you want to take this? Sure. <laughs> um, so I am very new to the whole InfoSec uh, net freedom community and... Um, yeah, there you go, sorry. Um, I'm very new to the whole like InfoSec net freedom community and... Uh, but I've been very interested in email for a long time for that reason, the large social graph, how many people use it, but it's always been very untinkerable um, because I come from being a web developer. Um, I build browser-based apps you know, that live on domain names. They have .coms and .orgs. Um, and what the proposition that MailPile had immediately to me was that it's gonna be run locally. There's no .com necessarily. That's kind of a strange idea. But the big reason for this, that the, the gain is that there's this really large talent pool, right? the amount of web versus native developers out there that we can draw from as an open source project is huge. Um, these are stats just from GitHub uh, last year on the amount of people who write in those languages versus these other languages. Um, additionally, there's tremendous amount more of deployment options, uh, local and server, and cross-platform, so you can design one interface that responds and scales down, and we can lead to much better software, I think. 
Um, but the question is then how do we do this securely, right? How do we make this secure so keys aren't compromised? Uh, Browser-based crypto stuff is very not, not standardized yet, not widely implemented, not supported. So we kind of came up with this idea. Um, you want to? Sure. Yeah. So roughly on the back end, really all we're doing is just exposing uh, PGP through GNU PG, uh, which, you know, uh, as many shortcomings as PGP has, it is, uh, despite all that, the, the way that people encrypt email and, and sign email. But, you know, the big problem that has been, uh, you know, really uh, troubling anybody who cares about email privacy for a long time has been that if you round to the closest million, nobody uses uh, encrypted email practically on a day-to-day -day basis, right? So, you know, the reason for this is that uh, PGP is uh, obnoxiously difficult to use for, for most people. Uh, and uh, frankly, even the people who know how to use it fuck it up every now and then because it's just, uh, you know, it's a mess, it's a mess. And, you know, so we thought, okay, maybe we can make this simple by, by putting a nice HTML front end and yet using the, the good old binaries in the back end. So the private keys are handled by, by GNU PG. We don't do anything like that. And, you know, we never let the front end developers touch uh, any of the crypto stuff. Um, this is uh, as much for, for their safety as their benefit, right? Um, <laughs> So, you know, and uh, this also allows us to, to do all sorts of other things because if we were doing this kind of browser crypto stuff, we'd be limited by all of the uh, problems that come with being in a browser. But since we're doing this and, you know, uh, part of communicating uh, when you're building an email client is that you're communicating with lots of servers all over the place. So one of the things we want to do, and we haven't quite gotten there because we're not, not fully in 1.0 yet, is we want to uh, eventually tunnel all of the uh, communications through Tor, at least the ones that, that have any uh, possibility of exposing anything about the user um, itself. So maybe you know, a user connecting to an IMAP server, if it's the IMAP server that they run, maybe that isn't necessarily uh, need, uh, needed to tunnel through Tor, but you know, if people are using wacky um, plugins, like uh, say we, you know, we have this kind of Gravatar plugin that pulls in like little icon avatars, you know, that's something that you absolutely want to put through Tor because otherwise you're exposing your social graph. We don't want to do that. So, you know, but by and large, you know, <laughs> this comes down to uh, improving PGP's usability because PGP is uh, horrendously difficult to use. Um, Brennan's uh, metaphor is that it is a hydra because all of the uh, things need to work at the same time. You need to chop off all of the heads and, and if you failed any one of them, it will cause you amounts of pain. So I'll, I'll take back over here. Because, yeah. Um, yeah, a year ago when I started working on this, it was like, okay, uh, you gotta get with this PGP thing. And I created my first key and it looked like this. And I was using this tool called GPG Tools on my Mac and it's supposed to make it easier. And then a friend's like, hey, send me your public key. And the app didn't instruct me how to do that. I had no real clear idea of how to do that. And the only other time I'd been asked to use PGP was when I participated in Occupy stuff a few years ago. And then I couldn't figure it out. And being a programmer and not quite really understanding what to do is really frustrating but you're presented with screens like this that have lots of little metadata items that you need to know what those things mean. I'm sure a lot of people in this room are more familiar with this than an average uh, sample group. Um, and then there, there's these tabular uh, lists like this that you browse and you can see email addresses and it's uh, okay, then there's key IDs and this is all supposed to be useful. But uh, that, you know, like, you know, we'll go back 15 years ago, that's what a lot of interfaces on computers look like, right? But that's not really what most people are using nowadays. They're using these social uh, networking sites like this that are very human-centric. It's a name and it's a picture. And that's why we've seen these large uh, uh, migrations to using social platforms like Facebook and Twitter uh, because they, uh, they hook right into our brains, natural uh, processing of understanding faces and recognition and stuff. So we're trying to bring a lot of that to MailPile. Um, yeah, we're gonna talk a little bit about our indexing and how that's more secure and different than other clients? So, you know, if you've ever tried to use the search options in Thunderbird, you will know how painful that is. Um, it, it takes basically forever to get results and, and you just, well, m most of the time uh, Thunderbird users just get used to scrolling through all of their inbox rather than actually trying to use the search function. It's just that painful. Um, and most real people, don't really want that. They want something that's like Gmail that is really fucking fast. 
right? They, they want to be able to type in words and email comes at them. And uh, so, you know, but the problem with Gmail, you know, evil centralized nonsense. So, you know, one of the core things of MailPile is that it is actually a very fast search engine. And, you know, it's pretty much uh, on the same speed level as not much or, or Gmail. Uh, but it doesn't have the 60 megabytes worth of dependencies that not much has, and it doesn't have the evil spying that Gmail has. Um, on top of that, one thing that Gmail will never be able to provide you with, and this uh, applies especially, you know, uh, they're developing this thing called end-to-end -end now, which is supposed to be super cool, except end-to-end uh, -end will not be able to uh, search your emails. Like, or if you use end-to-end -end and you encrypt your emails, yay, everybody's happy, and then you want to search for something and it does not work. So, you know, we have this search engine that actually, you know, um, in, uh, indexes your encrypted emails and the search index itself is encrypted because you don't want to leak that stuff and, and so on and so forth. So basically you, you get all of the benefits of having a fast search engine without any of the drawbacks of using Gmail and, and such things. Um, well that's kind of cool. And that's actually where MailPal com came from originally, and it kind of is still visible in the name, in that uh, it started off as this kind of weird, wacky experiment to see if uh, how hard it would be to build a fast search engine. Um, but it does have a few more things in crypto. Um, so uh, mostly, you know, when people are using uh, this, they, uh, they see the web interface. But we do have this kind of nice REST API behind it, and. Uh, so, you know, basically all of the things that you, you would like to uh, do with the web interface, you can also uh, throw um, REST uh, requests at it and get JSON back or HTML or text or whatever you want. Uh, and similarly, there is a built-in uh, command line interface, so you can, um, you can just type all sorts of messages and all of that kind of comes for free because of the way it's all structured. Uh, you can also just load MailPile as a Python module and just uh, you know, start doing wacky statistics on your inbox, which is really fun. Um, uh, or you, know, you can, um, as a weird meta thing, you can also uh, load the hacks uh, plugin and uh, type hacks slash PyCLI and you get a, um, a Python in, uh, interpreter there. Um, but you can also do fun things on the front end. Like uh, building really interesting new plugins and ways of visualizing your inbox and interacting with it that might be better suited for different sorts of research and discovery. This is kind of an experimental tweet deck style uh, view where you could load different columns and kind of keep tabs on multiple inboxes and quickly handle mail that way across a large sect. Another is like a uh, force directed social graph. So you can see like who you interact with in a given topic or a given uh, aspect of, of your work or whatever you're trying to do. And um, different search terms obviously are gonna yield different networks, but then the next step is to uh, build tools that you can select nodes in the network and then interact with that in an interesting way. Um, and we're ready to do like a, a demo. Um, very quick. Yeah, very quick, rough little demo. Uh, oh, wait. Uh, okay. <laughs> work? <laughs> mm, okay. Maybe it won't let me share the browser window then. Uh, which way is the browser? There we go. Okay. So we've got uh, translation uh, in various stages of completion for different languages. Um, if you're a translator and you want to help, we'd love your help. Um, and uh, let's load this up. So th this is the uh, demo site where basically people can try it out. It's uh, demo.mailpile.is and a uh, bunch of functionality is disabled because it's a demo site and we don't want people to actually be able to send email. Uh, but you know, we've got, uh, mostly this is a user interface demo, it's kind of nice. Um, Icelandic bananas are green, yes. Um, and you, know, you can do things like uh, searching for encryption keys right from the app and it kind of you know, makes it uh, super easy to use. That's not a very good message, though. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, so getting getting new keys and searching for keys on key servers and things like that. Another thing that should actually be uh, tunneled through something like Tor. Um, th that's all all you know, easy easily done. 
Uh, should we try compose? Sure. So another thing, if you've ever tried to use a, a PGP-enabled email client, uh, one of the things that you will uh, very quickly see is that um, it's very hard to know, like, uh, you, you often have to choose whether to encrypt, but if you type in uh, here the name of somebody whose uh, key is available to MailPile, then it becomes green, it just automatically encrypts because yay, that's the way it should behave. And if you add somebody who you can't encrypt to, then it uh, unlocks because you can't encrypt it. And here's the signing options, which um, I don't think that's, yeah, okay, that's available. So, uh, and you can set different, um, uh, you know, what options you want. Um, so, yeah. Uh, we're, we're still kind of working on how to best visualize uh, communicating to people what is and isn't encrypted, um, but so far we kind of have orange or uh, green for what is, whereas attachments will be also tucked inside. Um, a lot of mail clients seem to get that wrong. You might send the message encrypted, but not the attachment, and um, that's a kind of common flaw, and we really want to make that not happen. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, that's that's roughly it. Uh, we we are uh, we just released a beta a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it is available for testing with nice installers for for uh, silly operating systems. Uh, you can also just clone it from GitHub or something like that. Um, you know, but uh, the 1.0 for like actual real people, uh, you know normal users uh, won't be out for several more months because there are things in this that are hideously broken and we want to fix them. But apart from that, you know, uh, please use it and, and tell people about it when it's ready. Yeah. Thank you.